glitter on your nose. All right, you're live. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Hope you all had, oh wait. Instagram, you just had, I think we just had it on photo. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Not live. <laughs> well, we're live on Facebook. Hold on, Instagram. We'll be right there. Oh no, leaf blowers. It's gonna be a little noisy today. <laughs> Are we good? Let's check, oh, you're now live. Okay, hi, hello everybody. We're making donuts. Happy Tuesday. Hope you guys all had a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Did we? Yeah. Good day, right? Asher had a baseball tournament this weekend, so that was fun. We spent a couple of our days just sitting at the baseball field watching him play. So I was going to make something completely different, but Asher requested donuts this morning. So we are going to make the chocolate sprinkle donuts from the new cookbook, Eat What You Love. That is what they look like. They are gluten-free, dairy-free, of course, grain-free. Uh, so you want to get started? Okay, so well, here I'll have the recipe done. Do you want to read the recipe or do you want to dump everything? Want to dump everything? Okay, here we go. So I'll do the eggs, even though they're pretty. Do you want to do them or do you want me to do them? You want me to do them? I think you're actually pretty good at them. But why don't you go ahead and put coconut milk in? Half cup of coconut milk. Yep, go ahead and do the whole thing. Thank you very much. Okay, and then there is a bowl over there with melted coconut oil. All right, so you guys know that I am not a huge fan of the taste of coconut. So since we are already using coconut milk in here, which by the way, I did, uh, you can dump those, hold on. I did coconut milk in this to keep the recipe nut-free. So this recipe is completely nut free as well, I forgot to mention that with all the other freeze. So you could do cashew milk or almond milk if that's what you wanna use, but coconut milk we use to keep it tree nut free. And then we're also using coconut oil. Because we're already using coconut milk, I wanted to try to minimize any coconut flavor, we're also using coconut flour, uh, that you would taste in there because I'm not a big fan of it. Hold on, you can dump this one. And so I like to use expeller pressed coconut oil to keep the flavor out. Uh, it doesn't have any scent or flavor of coconut, which I like. So, you know, you can choose and pick whatever you want, but that's why I call for that specifically in this recipe. Okay, next is our maple syrup. Got a quarter cup of maple syrup. Got it? All right, and then just a little bit of vinegar, apple cider vinegar, and the reason for this is that it helps to react with the baking soda, keep it over the jar, and it uh, makes them rise and also makes them kind of get some air bubbles in them. So it just makes them a little lighter than your traditional grain-free baked good, which can sometimes, often, shouldn't say sometimes, be super dense. They are gonna be more like a cake donut than, you know, your fried donut. They, will, they won't be as airy, but they're still really great. Yeah, you can dump that in, that's vanilla. And then we have, you know, the nice thing about this is that we literally just dump everything into our blender. So you can actually start dumping everything else. So we've got, wait, hold on. Okay, that's baking soda mixed with salt. I just wanted to make sure. So this one, be careful when you dump it. Dump it kind of slowly. This is our cocoa powder. Why don't you come down into the jar just a little bit? There we go. Cool. Okay, so coconut sugar, arrowroot. This one also puffs up, so be careful. So because I kept this recipe nut free, by the way, if you don't need to be nut free, I have lots of other donut recipes between my books and blog. Uh, but because we kept this one nut free, I did a mixture of coconut flour, which is going in now, and arrowroot. And the two of those flours kind of combined together help give it a bit of, that's okay, help give it a bit of a crispy, oh, it looks cool. Cause it's like, it's all layered. So we put, Hold on, let me finish my sentence, but <laughs> gives it a little bit of a crispy outside and kind of more of like a cake-like texture on the inside by combining those things. Uh, and we put all of our liquids at the bottom of the blender. This is gonna go for anything you're making in a blender, whether it's a smoothie or a batter. Uh, but if you do your liquids at the bottom, it's just gonna help everything continue moving uh, and get it all combined. Otherwise, if you put your solids, like your flowers at the bottom, you're gonna end up with like some clumps and lumps down at the bottom. So that's why we do that. 
forgot to say that, well, you guys know because you're chiming and tuning in live, but I just forgot, always forget to say we're live. I come live every Tuesday. We switched our new time, so we are now coming live Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, and so hopefully more of you guys can, here, I'm gonna plug that in really quick. Uh, hopefully more of you guys can tune in than our old time. It was kind of hard because people were in between dinner and school pickup and all of that kind of stuff. After school sports is where we were at. Uh, we are out of school now, so it's kind of fun. Uh, but yeah, so new time, 10 a.m. every Tuesday. Okay, but I'm gonna blend this and you can help me with the donut maker, okay? Incorporated, and there's a couple reasons. I'm gonna back over here so you guys can see me from Instagram. Um, there's a couple reasons why I do this in the blender. There, number one is it's just easy. Uh, number two is blending it on a high speed helps to also create some air bubbles in the batter. So it's just kind of another way to help make these slightly more airy than your traditional gluten-free or grain-free baked good, and you know without making real donuts where you're making the dough and you're <coughs> as well, so. Uh, okay, hold on, one more time here. maker here. I just find that's like the cleanest, easiest way to do it, but you could also do uh, like an ice cream scoop. Uh, one, the, one of the ones with the levers is kind of the easiest thing, but if you just take a Ziploc, put it in a jar or a bowl or something just to kind of hold it open, and then pour your batter into it. It's just a very quick makeshift piping bag. So we do have a question about the donut maker. Yes. Someone's wondering if they don't have that, but they do have like a bagel pan. Will yeah. that work as well? Yeah, so there are baking instructions in the book. Uh, I will say they do get a little bit more dense, actually quite a bit more dense I found baking them, but they still taste great. And also typically those pans, like the bagel, bagel pans or donut pans uh, are quite a bit bigger in terms of the cavity size. So you just probably won't get the amount that it, I say it yields, but it's what? Oh, you're, <laughs> Asher's watching on the TV and says that we're 20 seconds behind real life. Did you just count that in your head? Yeah. It's pretty funny. Uh, it's kind of distracting, isn't it? There's always a little lag time with the internet, but yeah, so you won't probably get as many uh, but you definitely can bake them. We have done that before and they work just fine. Okie dokie. Still have a little bit of batter in here, but I'm gonna stop there just so we can overfill, overfill our bag. Actually, there's still a lot of room there. Hold on, can you open that like that for me? Can you just keep it open while I dump the rest in there? That's perfect, thank you. I won't get it on your hands, but if I do, it's chocolate. <laughs> So are you going to help me pipe them into the donut maker? It's going to explode. It's not going to explode. Oh, oh, don't do that. That would be terrible if we lost all that batter all over the counter. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So seal up your bag and then you just snip off a little corner. Uh, <laughs> I have frosting. snipped. What? Frosting? We'll do the frosting while well, these yeah, are cooking. Frosting? No, this is the batter for the donuts. When you sip, cut it off, it frosting. Oh, like we do with frosting, totally. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so this is hot. Be careful, please. Snip off just a tiny little corner. I'm going to do one ash and then you can do another, okay? After I show you. It comes out pretty fast, so, and you don't want to touch the bag to the hot black uh, iron because it will melt the bag immediately, okay? You see that? See how I did that? So you fill them pretty much all the way up. You want to do it? I want to see it melt the bag. No! If we melt the bag, what is it such for? an eight, year, eight, almost nine-year-old boy thing to say. Um, if you melt the bag, you'll get plastic in our donuts, which is not great. Okay, let go. Let go, let go. Okay, here we go. I'm going to do another one. I don't want you to see that because then it starts to smell like plastic. I've done it by accident. I haven't been paying attention and I've totally done it. What does it look like? It just melts the plastic. It just starts to get, I don't know, like it shrinks, but then it makes your whole bigger and then your batter starts falling out everywhere and it makes a huge mess <laughs> so you don't want to do it yeah 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 that sounds fun huh <laughs> okay there we go I prefer to do a little bit of a smaller hole even though it takes a little bit longer because otherwise if you get too much the batter just like rushes out and then you end up with a mess so you close that I do something a little bit weird which is totally unnecessary, but I like my donuts to be a little more symmetrical. So after the green light goes off, I flip the whole machine over. <laughs> I think that it helps make them more rounded on both sides. I know that's really weird. And you probably could just go through and flip each individual donut, but it feels a lot easier to me to just flip the whole donut maker. So we're gonna do that in just a second. Um, but let's get our frosting going first. Uh, we don't have any ingredients. We do. They're over here. We are very prepared, I promise. Hold on. I'll show you. Okay. Let me just move everything out of the way really quick. All right. We have one other question. Yes. Someone on Instagram asked, are you ever asked to recreate recipes that you personally do not like? Totally. All the time. And I do it all the time for you guys. Um, I don't know that it's that I would say like I don't like them. But uh, I can name a few from this book that I recreated that I probably wouldn't have if you guys wouldn't have requested them. Uh, chicken pot pie is one of them, mostly because Ryan like despises chicken pot pie. Uh, and then, let's see, trip, shrimp and grits, biscuits and gravy. Those are just things like I had never, hold on, you're interrupting. Those are things that I had just never really had before just because I grew up in California and not in the South. So I wouldn't say that I don't like them. I just, it wouldn't be something that like I would have created. So yeah, I take things <coughs> that you guys request all the time and remake them. Yes. Shrimp and grits are on the same page as the donuts. What do you mean? They're on the same page. Well, they shouldn't be because the donuts, oh, oh, you're right. Actually, you're totally right. <laughs> Good job. The <laughs> shrimp and grits is a, a little bit of a longer recipe. And so it expands past after the picture and then the donuts start right there you're totally right I almost told you you were wrong but you, you, you weren't you very um, perceptive okay so for our frosting we kept it super simple if you want to make frosting homemade like the glaze you can use my homemade chocolate recipe from celebrations and that way you can control what sweeteners you use uh, but to make things a little easier we have a very dark chocolate that I've measured out and put, uh, no, we need it for this, that I've measured out and put over a pan of water, just about an inch or so of water in here. And this is just creating a super simple double boiler. So with melting chocolate, especially melting chocolate that is already like chocolate chips or a chocolate bar that you're chopping, you need to be really careful in terms of not having the heat too high and then not letting any hot water like splash up into it because that will cause the chocolate to seize. And then the other thing is making sure that your maple syrup is room temperature uh, and then we're using a little coconut oil. So to make this glaze, all we're doing is dark chocolate, maple syrup, and coconut oil, which is super simple and really easy. 
I wanted to keep this one as easy for you guys as possible, especially because you're already making homemade donut batter and I know that that can get, you know, a little time consuming. So this is kind of that like shortcut way to make a really great glaze. Asher, can you go into that cupboard and grab all of our sprinkles that we have? We have lots of choices for sprinkles. Okay, going, going. We have a time for a few questions because we're kind of in this like waiting stage. Uh, I think they're down on the bottom there. If anybody has any questions. We do um, have someone on Instagram that's wondering if they could possibly make pancakes with this batter. Oh sure, yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't see why not. Oh right here, hey. There you go. Uh, yeah, no. I mean, I don't see why not. Uh, they they rise here. Thank you. Uh, is there a chocolate? I think there's a chocolate one too. Oh, look at you going in for the chocolate chip. Uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, they rise really well, uh, and they, like I said, kind of get a bit of a crispy. Yeah, I mean, I, I've never tried it, but based on how they come out of here, I think that they would totally work. I think you could probably use them in a waffle iron, too, just because we're using a donut maker, which is very similar to a waffle iron. So, buddy, please be, there's still a rubber band on there. He's getting into chocolate chips. Okay, so our first little batch is done. We also have a few people wondering um, if you could make your bagels in a donut maker. That's a great question. I don't know. Because of the yeast and how they rise significantly, I, I think you probably could. Uh, I would just, just be careful with how much batter you put in because they might overflow. Uh, I've never tried it. My bagels, my everything bagels are like one of my favorite recipes in the whole book. How many did you take? Five. Okay, no more. All right, I'm gonna do this next. Do you want to do? Do you want to do it again, or you want me to just finish it? Okay. I know it's really fast. I put the um. The what? Sprinkles? Yeah. So I found. Well, first of all, there is a homemade sprinkles recipe in this book that is honestly really easy. It's a little more time consuming just because you have to like pipe that pipe out the lines and cut them. Can you stop, honey? That's distracting. Please. Fashion. Yeah. Oh, no, because it's when you drop it, it's loud. Plus we need to use this and now it's dirty. Can you grab another one out of here? Uh, back to what I was saying. I can't really finish a sentence when I'm not doing this alone. <laughs> uh, we have homemade sprinkles in the book, but I found Asher Madden. I can't hear, and they can't hear. Can you stop, please? Just one. We only have one. I'm going to send you back out if you don't stop. Uh, okay. I'm going to finish this sentence and this thought, I promise you. Uh, so what I was saying is that there's homemade sprinkles in the book, but I did find some dye-free sprinkles on Amazon. They have refined sugar in them, of course. Uh, but the other ingredients, well, there's cornstarch. They're not great basically, but they're dye-free, which is important to us. So I figure every once in a while to have a, mm, you know, I'm like double thinking here. These, I don't know about the rest of these, this chocolate one, I'm not as stoked about the ingredients. Uh, but we are out of the India tree ones, which I think are my favorite. And so these ones are good. We stay away from food dyes because I think they cause some behavioral issues. Uh, and I just, don't like them in any of our foods, so we try to stay away. So dye-free, so they're just gonna end up being this like a little bit more pastel kind of colors. Uh, but yeah, India Tree brand would be my favorite if you're not making them homemade. These are Wilton, and I found them on Amazon, uh, and they're gonna do for today. So, yes, you were gonna ask a question? Well, there's not really much else for you to do right now uh, until this frosting is ready and we dip. So, what do you think? Well, there's not really much else to help me with, unfortunately, because I'm just waiting for this chocolate to melt and then these rest of these to cook. So you can just sit. Do you want to answer some questions? Should we have a Q&A with Asher? No. No? <laughs> you don't want to? All right. We don't have to. Any other questions from people? Well, there was a question for Asher, but I, we can pass it off to Zane now. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, I can probably answer it. Um, I know you pretty well. What is Asher's most favorite recipe from this new book? Or the family as a whole? What do you think? Family as a whole. Family as a whole. I would say these donuts. 
The rest of the family, but Asher's not a huge fan, uh, is the cowboy cookies. And then if we're gonna go for like food, like sus actual, yeah. actual, I know you can go. I love you. Hey, say goodbye to everybody. Bye. He's going over to the grandparents' house. So okay, bye. Thank you for your help. See you later. I'll uh, I'll save I'll save one of these for you. Does that sound good? Just one. Hey. Hey. See so, ya. Yeah, thanks for your help, buddy. <laughs> All right, school's out. So it means lots of times of time over at the grandparents' house because he's bored here. So I'm like, I told him, I was like, if you tell me that you don't know what to do, I'm bored. Uh, what else, what else does he say? I'm sure you guys can all relate who have kids. I was like, then you're gonna start doing chores. Uh, so he called the grandparents promptly and asked if he could go over there, <laughs> which I'm fine. I'm like, great, that's fine. Figure out your issue. So uh, anyways, back to the food. Beef with broccoli would be probably number one family favorite, uh, the chicken piccata and then the teriyaki sheet pan salmon and then Moroccan chicken sheet pan dinner. That's like four, but those are the dinners that I keep on repeat that I know that they're all gonna love. Okay, don't get impatient and turn your heat up too high to melt your chocolate, because I do that often and then it will seize. You don't want it to seize. But I, when I say seize, if you're not used to working with chocolate, you know it has seized if it looks like gritty and grainy. Uh, it'll still taste fine, but it won't be a smooth chocolate kind of uh, glaze that you want. We do have someone on Instagram that is wondering which of your children is uh, the pickiest eater, eater that one. That and one. how do you combat that? <laughs> <laughs> that one is definitely the pickiest. We have had more dinner battle standoffs than any of the other kids. Uh, how do we combat it? Well, so first things first is I just, I make things that I know that they like and I keep those on rotation frequently. Uh, and then the uh, and then when I try something new out, we do have a rule, you have to always try something. And then, and if you don't like it, then you don't have to finish it and you can eat more of whatever else is on your plate that you do like. Uh, and so that usually for him is he loves salad, which I'm like, great. Uh, I know he likes chicken. He will eat salmon some of the time. Um, oh, you know what? My maple syrup was too cold and I'm going to totally seize up my chocolate. But that's okay. We can fix it. Uh, I think you can, it's not going to be like, actually, wait, well, it's coming back together. Hold on a minute. <laughs> uh, anyways, back to picky kids. So yeah, we have a rule where you do have to try a bite of everything. If you don't like it, you don't have to finish it, uh, but you really like legitimately have to try and chew and swallow and all of that. <laughs> and then I, you know, like I think kids change and their, their preferences change a lot. And so I'll retry something again a couple months later uh, and make them try another bite and see if they like it again. Uh, and then, you know, like there's just certain things I know. I know Asher doesn't like chicken legs which I'm fine with because I didn't used to like dark meat for a really long time either. And so I'll always put in a breast like piece for him. So there's ways I think where you're not having to like make two meals, but that you are still kind of serving the same thing, but giving them a little bit of a choice in that kind of a matter. Uh, but then also kind of that, like getting them involved, having them look through a book with you or, you know, something like that and getting to pick the recipes really helps as well because what I go back to and it's kind of like with school lunches I'm like hey you picked that like you chose to have it you can't tell me that you don't want it anymore because you were the one who chose it so giving them like a little bit of ownership over stuff like that I think helps as well and um, just getting them to kind of pick things out that look good to them and to try some new things and yeah so okay this came back together uh, I put it back over low heat and just kind of kept stirring and then I added a little bit of water, which the recipe calls for. So I would suggest kind of doing all the, the th first three ingredients first and just seeing what the texture looks like. And it's funny because water is like counterintuitive to a smooth chocolate. Usually water would seize it up, but I actually think it helps just give it a nice kind of gloss and keeps it a little bit more loose so that you can dip your donuts in it. Okay, so we've got our second batch done and I'm gonna stop for now. I'm just gonna unplug this 
Yes, you guys don't have to sit and wait while I do all of the rest of them because with this little maker, it actually, I mean, I could probably do at least two more batches, which would be, like how many are in here? Almost, it'd be like 20, 20 donuts. So you, you guys won't have to sit and watch that, but I will start dipping. I would wait until your donuts are relatively cool to dip your glaze in. They don't have to be completely cool because your glaze is warm, but it won't really stick to the donuts if you go too early. So you've got your glaze. Can everybody, can we see, are we at a good angle? Because I can move this out here if not. Um, yeah. I mean, you're a little bit far away on Facebook, but I think okay. that's All right. the nature well, of it. So I like to keep my bowl of chocolate over my double boiler just because there's still steam going there. So it'll just help keep the chocolate from setting too quickly. And then just take your donuts and I, you know, you can use a toothpick if you want, but I just kind of put my finger in the middle there and dip it. And then depending on how thick your glaze is, you can kind of swirl it to have some of it come off. But I mean, that's kind of perfect. So, and then just put them on a cooling rack to cool. Whoa. They just look so pretty. They're so cute. I like the minis. I just think they're such a good size. Uh, they're really great for little kids too because then they're not getting like a crazy sugar rush, but they do feel like they're still getting a treat. And of course, like we are using unrefined sugars in here. And I, from everything I have read, coconut sugar doesn't spike your blood sugar as much. I'm, I just notice a big difference when my kids eat these types of treats versus store-bought treats with white sugar in them. And then of course food dyes. Uh, I don't, they just don't get crazy hyper. I mean, I wouldn't probably give this to them right before bed, but it's a great, um, summer treat. So it was Asher's request. He just said like, I'm on summer break. What, what kind of a special breakfast can I have this morning? And we didn't have any of these made, but they freeze really well. So usually when I do a batch like this, I'll keep maybe like a half dozen out, uh, in the fridge or just at room temperature and then freeze the rest. And that, that way we have them for special occasions. So, you know, if they're going to a birthday party and there's going to be cupcakes or cake, usually I'll have a couple cupcakes in the freezer that are left over from something else, or I'll tell them that they can have a donut or two. And so we'll take those to a birthday party instead of uh, the cake or cupcakes that's going to be served, which is nice. So it's just nice to kind of have something on hand. Okay. So you can put your sprinkles in a bowl and after you dipped your chocolate, just dip them straight into the sprinkles. They'll have way more sprinkles on them than if you were to do them by hand, mm -hmm. but they start to get kind of like if you're breading chicken, you know, it's like you start to kind of get the breading starts to get clumpy and mixed in and it's the same kind of, you'll start to get a kind of a chocolate clump of sprinkles. So I think it actually ends up wasting more. So I like to go like this, but it's really up to you and you can let your kids kind of have fun with this too. And if you have parchment underneath, you can catch any extras that you can let them help you put them on. Uh, I think that's it. That's kind of, I'm like, that's, that's pretty, I'm going to just keep going at these and you guys don't have to sit and watch, but I did really quickly just want to mention because we're almost to the end of the month that you have a few days to still join us in our uh, cookbook club. So if you want to join in on the eat what you love cookbook club, just head over to my Instagram page. There's some awesome prizes. I just posted about them today again. So if you haven't been online for the month of May and you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go over and see and you still have a chance to get in on that. So um, definitely make sure to put your entries in before June 1st because that's when we're going to pick winners. Oh, there's um, plastic over this. Uh, <laughs> but it's been so fun. There's been a couple people, actually like a good, you know, 10 to 12 people that have kind of taken on the challenge to almost cook their way through the book and their whole like Instagram feed is full of recipes from the book. And it's just been really fun because they've made, you know, 20 or so recipes from the book, which there's like 125 in the book. So it's, it's pretty fun to see what they've picked out and what they've made. And then people have been kind of sharing their experiences with what recipes they like and how, you know, like how easy it was to make or if their kids liked it. So if you um, want to know more and you're just not sure if you want the book even, you can go to the hashtag eat what you love book on Instagram and basically see every recipe that's included in the book and people's feedback, like real people's feedback who are cooking in their kitchen. And that's probably the best review that you're going to get on it. So, all right, guys, uh, 
we'll see you. I'm just going to make sure before I commit to this that I'm not like out of town or anything next week. <laughs> I will see you next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific on Instagram and Facebook. See you guys later.